Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mark Paul Gossler's second favorite podcast. Today on podcast, we go to the depths of the worst archetypal characters a man named Chuck has ever written. Today we talk the Big Bang Theory. Hello, my name is Matthew Pizzana, co-host of this Hoot Nanny we call Pilot Pass. I do have a co-host. We will get to him in a little bit because... Hi, my name's Dell. I don't like to sit down at times I'm supposed to. <laughs> that was our favorite, one of our favorite co-hosts, who is a award-winning filmmaker, and he is from the most popular <laughs> podcast about movies hosted by two Matts. Matthew Thornberry is on the show today. Matthew, welcome. Yay! Thank you. I wonder if there is another podcast hosted by two Matts, and if so, are they more popular than us? I refuse to believe it, sir, and I make the history here on ah. Pilot Pass. So as far as we're concerned, we are number one. You're today. editing the wiki as we go. <laughs> as we go. We've got it on uh, lockdown. So you gave us an idea you gave us one good one. Everybody heard the great good podcast that you gave us. Now they get to hear the terrible podcast that you have given us today, The Big Bang Theory. Matthew, first of all, I hate you. Second of all, thank <laughs> you for bringing us something so absurd and ridiculous. So if you will be so kind, please tell us what your first experience with The Big Bang Theory was. Um, uh, probably uh, over at an in-law's house Ooh, watching it. It's rough. Um, I don't know. I, I do like the videos, the compilations on YouTube where people edit out the laugh track. Mm. <laughs> That's the only time they're funny. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the, the show obviously isn't for me. Um, it's not made for anybody like me. I don't think, um, it, it it's, I don't know if it's a matter of, uh, taste opinion, whatever, but for some reason, this kind of show just doesn't doesn't do it for me and every time i've seen it um it's just you know uh, i i find myself drifting to my phone it makes me sad it makes me sad indeed dell will you tell the people what this show is about so that we can begin to complain about it yes um well let me give it two different ways uh chuck lore lori matt do you lori. know how to pronounce this lori lori yeah. okay <clears throat> attempted to create a show about a bunch of uh nerds who we're supposed to laugh at for being nerdy, um, who live in an apartment uh, together, two roommates who have two nerdy friends, um, and their kind of interest in the relatable blonde girl across the hall um, and kind of the uh, sitcom-esque farce that happens between two unrelatable, crazy, nerdy people and a relatable blonde woman uh, and hilarity ensues. What we got was a show about two very normal, completely people who happen to be mildly autistic, who we're supposed to laugh one at. One is not mildly. And autistic. a complete, yeah, one is not mildly, sorry. Two autistic people, one clearly so, uh, who we're supposed to laugh at, who are completely of average knowledge, it would seem, other than they have doctorates, who do nothing extraordinary. Um, who don't seem that much more intelligent than just some above average people um, paired with a, a lady across the hall who seems to be very dim witted, but yet somewhat likable and still a very nice person. And there is no reason these two would not normally get along in any other real life. Uh, so there you go. It's, hey, Matt. Yes, Matt. Got a, got a quick question for you, please. What year did this premiere? 2005. Okay. Because here's why, you know, my first note said, uh, you know, I'm the wrong person to watch this. And here's why I think 2005, very important to kind of put this into perspective. When people think of nerds now, like if you watch Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, um, right. Oh, good, because I actually touched on this and that was an exact yeah. show I picked. Okay, so you definitely have people who are on the spectrum, but you also <laughs> have like the cool billionaire, you know, you have... Now I think you relate um, being rich and successful and nerdy to Elon Musk, uh, uh, people like Mark Zuckerberg, right? Not people who can not completely function in society. This show seemed like, and this is why I say it's not for me, and it's, I don't think it's for people our age. It's for our parents 
because it feels like something that was written in the 50s and lifted yeah. up and put into today and all of the pop culture references are different and it kind of you can kind of see it with the beat that the show ends on with them you know not having pants you know they run into the bully and yeah. the bully takes their Start pants right it's there. such the it's crap? such a 1950s way of looking at nerds it's like they're going to be nerdy they can't talk to girls or well, nerds i would even say it's later like i could see i said this movie this show easily was 20 years too late like revenge of the nerds was the last time nerds were nerds anything yeah. after revenge of the nerds too nerds are cool <laughs> like what are Not you the talking the, the second, second the second the <laughs> second the once second ogre, once ogre buddy goes holly the nerds it's over that's right yeah, yeah. It's over. Once Buddy Holly, the song by Weezer came out and it was cut to Happy right, Days. Yeah. When Rivers Cuomo is a rock star wearing nerd glasses playing what they call nerd rock, it's over. It's and he's dead. Because, and he, and that, that trope that point, is so is stupid. Right. At that point, Rivers yeah. became cooler than the fonts. You're absolutely and right. And then even, right. Exactly. That was literally the breaking point was probably that music video for nerds being cool. Because, I mean, she, Bill and I would look down on these two well, not look down on these two, but like lots of people watch Bill Nye, not nerdy kids. Lots of people watch freaking Beekman's World, not just nerdy kids. By the time we were even this age, it was cool. Yeah. So that's what I'm like. First of all, but, let's but here, dispel why, this notion. That, but here's why I say 2005 no, might be the 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 reason why this still worked. I want to just uh, clear yeah. 2007. I just looked it up. 2000, oh, 2007. Oh, that's still that's pushing it because the thing is, like once. I hate to I hate to give them this kind of credit, but once Marvel made superhero movies cool to the general public, that's yeah. when things completely turned around. I think if this had I would come say out, somewhat except if this Tim had come Burton out had already done that with no, no, because that's still but Tim Burton had done that with Batman. Because I remember in the '90s, all of a sudden wearing Batman logos and stuff was cool, and that was never cool before. Batman has been, and so I'm saying that might have been a precursor. I know, but that was still you a precursor where all of a sudden people were wearing stuff from comic books that no, nobody no, no, would no, have no, no, two no. years before. No, they that. were wearing it from Batman. You couldn't. I could wear. Well, I understand from, that. I could wear something from Batman in middle school, but if I tried to wear something like uh, Spider Man, I would have got my butt kicked. Right, or the Flash. You know? Yeah, and and but or Iron Man. Right, but if you if this this show could not work post Iron Man if it hadn't been established. I, th I think that's kind of my right, thesis. and I, I even wrote time. that, yeah, because they put him in the Flash T-shirt as if we're yep. supposed to go, oh, what a nerd! It's like, uh, you mean one of the most you know popular sitcoms on the CW, or whatever show it's on? You mean one of the most iconic characters now that, from, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, and that's from DC, the le the less popular of the two in the popular <laughs> fran, you know, in the in yeah. the in the world uh, culture. And that's why, like, for me, there was so much about this. I guess I should dispel. When people say it's a very smart show, I want to immediately mm -hmm. shut them down. No, it is no. not. It is a show with a semblance of in intellectually over it. All it uses is scientific jargon around very poor jokes from the 60s and that 70s. That is my, for They're my fourth note is basic nerdiness. Where someone is. says, it's hey, just like I like string theory. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Like the thing is, you could replace any of the scientific jargon with agricultural jargon, yep. ranching jargon. For instance, the first joke in the show, Joe, is, you know, well, if it goes through one hole, then and you can tell that it's waves, and if it goes through the other, then they're going to conflict. And if the, you measure it before it goes through the yeah. whole thing, we know what the dual split experiment is, dude. We've all either been to basic high school, or we've read about it, or it's been popularized in culture, even in 2007. I'm sorry. People knew what the dual split uh, slit experiment was. Get over that. But when he goes, well, I'm just going to make a t-shirt. Just take, take that joke and replace it with, well, that guy didn't know that it was barley. He thought it was hay. Oh, that's not very funny. Well, I just right. like to make a good T-shirt. Exactly. Any joke would have worked there. Just swapped words. Where something like Silicon Valley, you have to understand sometimes part of the what what the tabs coding is, is about debate. Right. Tabs versus yeah. why is that? <laughs> why is that funny? Or the in out compression? Yes, is a joke middle on out, yeah. stroking dicks <laughs> off. But that's the great part. Or middle out is because you got to go or thrust vector. You know, you have to understand what a vector is to understand why adjusting. The, the the thrust when you angle with dicks going in and out is funny right. you know you have to have a little bit of understanding of basic mathematics or physics or something even you know you'll get the joke probably overall but it's funnier if you understand the math and physics behind it whereas nothing in the show not a single joke in the show is math or science based even the point where they point to the the trot boards the and board. i remember like I, i've read that they have real consultants you know physics consultants come in and do the equations on the board 
And I'm like, that's so probably the joke the that comments. most people don't get. Yeah, but that's the point yeah. is I could probably look at that and if and he goes, this part's a joke down here about the differentials. And I was like, I vaguely recognize that. Like, I don't, I'm not a mathematician. But if, you know, if you were telling me that's a math joke, I should have laughed at that as a mathematician. But I don't know any mathematicians it's like, hey, remember when there was that differential joke at the bottom of his board? Because it wasn't a joke, even though they explicitly stated it's a joke. I'm okay, coming in hot now. I'm coming in hot. I got two things to say. One, it was weird that the only nerd archetype that they didn't use was the pushing up of the glasses. <laughs> Might as well go all yeah, the way if yeah. you're going to do that. Number two, Jaleel White, who played Urkel on Family Matters, was talking about his experiences working with Jewish writers on a TV show. And he said it was so obnoxious to sometimes see some of the dialogue that they had written for us. At one point in time, one of the characters walks in the front door and goes, oy vey. So you've got this middle-aged black lady saying, oy vey, whenever you know she comes to the situation. And I think that that's a lot of the problem. You have middle-aged to older white dudes writing shows like this, and it is a disaster because they are not connected to society or culture well, in any way, shape. Or, or, or their material, because let's look at this. The Simpsons writers are har normally Harvard graduates writing about- Futurama. Futurama. Kind of dumber people from an intellectual standpoint. And Futurama, they have mathematics degrees and doctorates. Silicon Valley is written by extremely intelligent people and people that work in the field. That's the difference is those people like, like Futurama is perfect because there yeah. are actually math equations based from the show. They've invented there are bad math equations, yeah. There jokes. Yeah, there are or a mathematical theorem. Yeah, there is jokes in the background that you don't get unless you're into cartography you know, or encryption. There are jokes that only work if you understand certain properties of genetics or DNA. And otherwise, it just kind of goes over you and you get to the slap or fart joke, which is fine. I love me some good fart jokes too, wrapped into anything. But they also get in the hardening humor, just like even The Simpsons gets in some really good clever sociological and political humor sometimes well and this show is devoid of that while we're talking about humor let me just kind of go over a couple of the notes that i had because um my very my literally very first note says i can see why people like this it demands nothing of you it tells but you it when to the laugh illusion of making right. you feel intelligent You're right exactly but also Let's talk about who is, quote unquote, the funniest character, because this is where my biggest problem is. You said, you know, we're supposed to laugh at the autistic kid, yep. which is exactly what it is. But I think they're supposed to. But, yeah, right. right. But, but here's the problem that I had with it. He's a terrible person. In the beginning, yes. we find out that he looks down on his sister because she is a waitress. We find out that he injured his father as a child, doesn't care. Um, he makes fun of, or the, one of them makes fun of Stephen Hawking, and they make fun of the elderly. This whole show is punching down. Every single joke That's is punching exactly. down. And and Penny, it's like, oh, she's just a waitress. She's stupid. Like, no that's, that's not like, how what's wrong work. with that she seems like a good person right See, that's the point is i even wrote right here is um why are we laughing at the guys they're autistic that's that's not funny anyway they're just normal people who work in the field of physics that's it big deal so penny's supposed to be the, then so is penny the joke but then why she's normal as well they're just people with different interests and different backgrounds it's not like they wouldn't be hanging out together if they lived one right. apartment from each this other. whole show <laughs> is look at these people they're weird and kind of different laughed at them and penny is supposed to be the one that we yeah that we identify with because we're not nerds but they're yeah. making fun of her too that, it makes no sense everything punches down which is like yeah. what's the first rule you don't punch down. never punch down yeah um so let me go through a few of mine that i'm glad we took so many notes because this is one of the few shows that weirdly enough it didn't make me angry like shows like walker or the the <laughs> one that matt had me watch there are shows that actually anger me they're so bad and then there's shows that i forget and then there's shows that i obviously love this was a show that was so meh to me it wasn't there were things that i disliked about it a lot but not so much so that i hated it it was just yeah. generally like here's something that's my bush funny but forgettable compared to a lot of other things trey and matt have done but right. yet I also didn't get irritated watching the show. This show, I got mildly irritated, but then was like, but I don't care enough. Like, I just won't watch the next episode. It's not like I hate well, this when you have, watch the next episode and complain. 
when you have an ending where it just just cuts you know they're in the car and it ends on yeah. no joke nothing leading to you know the next episode like yeah it literally like i said it demands nothing of you so there's not enough yeah. there it, like one of the best reviews i ever read for uh, men in black 2 said it's the wonder bread of cinema you know it yeah, exists there's nothing there to like there's nothing there to hate and that's yeah. kind of this show except for the punching down because again why are we laughing at an autistic kid although yeah. like he's autistic that's not cool but he's also being real like aggressively mean to everybody yeah, that's not on the autistic spectrum as being a dickhead. Right. You can sometimes come across as being removed or a little bit antisocial, but being a jerk to people is not one of the qualifications of being on the spectrum. And, and just clearly is just an asshole sometimes. And, and, and saying, you know, the character Penny, the second she sees this overtly nerdy guy freaking out about where to sit, like her character should, like as a person, should just kind of realize oh, this is a thing, and I'm at this guy's house anyway, so if this is where he sits, I should move. Nothing about, like, it It, it all just, like, I, I couldn't make sense of it. And I why, make sense is, of anything. why is Penny a good person? Because what we see her do is, like you just said, yeah. she ignored this dude's request. Um, she volunteers. The shower part we'll get back to in a second. But then she sends two dudes who she doesn't know to see her ex-boyfriend, who she knows is a huge man, but they don't know that, to collect her TV. That's not a nice thing for a female no. to do to two dudes. Yeah. Okay. And while I'm here, though, I do want to ask, I'm not crazy to think that it's not insane for a female to come to somebody's house, take a shower, and not bring any clothes. Yeah. There's that, but also I don't think it's insane to also be like, yeah, she's a new neighbor. Maybe we don't have to ogle her and treat her like a piece of meat. I mean – 2007 is not that long ago where somebody shouldn't mentally break down at the idea of a person in a bathrobe. Like, you know, there's just some things that it's like they, they intentionally just want to be, try to make them to be so pathetic. And you're like, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it because you're right. They're writing on like there's the like 80s Revenge of the Nerds movies, nerds, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then everything they like is popular. They like Battlestar Galactica. That's huge. The one part where you sit there with the belt buckle that's the classic Nintendo controller, even in 2007, you know why they got that as a prop? Because it was full, sold in hot fucking topic yeah. because everybody was wearing it. Do you think that made him nerdy? The fact that you look, if you want a hot topic and buy something, after the first three years they were open, it is popular culture. So half the, the stuff around their place was populated with stuff that they easily just walked down to Spencer's Gifts and bought and threw up in the set. There was nothing remote. Like, what would be really nerdy is to have, like, unknown physicists up. You know, to have pictures of, like, Niels Bohr or something like that, you know? Um, have pictures of, like, you know, wave functions. Shin Adams hung up. I mean, there's actual artists and physicists but Del, and scientists. Del, they have the periodic table. They have the periodic table is their oh, uh, their bath, you know, their, their shower curtain. Bath Come sheet. on, they're nerds. <laughs> God. Like, yeah. I mean, how many I can't even think how many times nerds now. Like, I love some of my favorite shows like Viriotassium on YouTube and stuff like that where these people are like funny and hip and clever and have families and they fly all over the world. Like Tom Scott, who introduced you to new stuff. It's like being a nerd has been out for so long that it, the, I just, the premise doesn't make sense to me at, at all. Um, Why the juice boxes? Other, but, but because again, I guess you know, like Buster it's Blue, weird. drink from juice they, boxes. Uh, also, I, I, feel boxes bad for, I kind of feel bad for, what's his name? Jim Parsons. Uh, yeah, cause because he's, I like him. That was the one reason thing is as an actor, in I was the, enjoying watching him the and the first, other guy, honestly, JD, whoever. I liked I liked them acting. In the first 10 minutes, you know, and he's a, an openly openly gay man, correct? Yep. Yes. There's a, a very awkward, got a case of a not gays joke between him and Galecki. You know? Yeah. And it's like, again, 2007, I thought like we were kind of past that. Not for Jew, old Jewish yeah. white men that write for TV in America. They are never going to get past that. I will tell you. But again, what do we know? Because this thing ran for, you know, 40 years. Yeah, that's true. His face, when he scrunches it up, that, that, that doesn't, uh, it just, it creeps me out. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like his face that way. It's, it's just uncomfortable. The other two characters that come in later on, uh, Howard and Raj, 
what are you even trying to do with those characters? Why Some of are them they looks there? like he's in the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, well, and the clearly I've, I've seen a few episodes, not full episodes, but like walk past, and like they make a lot of racist jokes in this show too, and there's misogynistic jokes, and, and I'm like, this is so low, not lowbrow, but look, if you're gonna be lowbrow, I'm all on board. I love shit like touch a cloth. I love some of the goofiest lowbrow shit there is. But Jackass, then, baby. Don't jackass oh yeah but, and if, if you want to dress it up as a joke like ha, we're making it about physicists then you're talking like futurama and shit great now here's a this question doesn't hit the notes at all this is schlock i mean does I just... does this show would the show have succeeded on any network besides cbs cw Ooh. that no 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 cw no, not at all C- cw's cw for like the last 10 years it's been like like tweens like that's who they go after like this show would right for the last bombed. 10 years that's what i'm saying i still think before that it was such a little obscure one it might have found a foothold uh, but they, they didn't really have any, any way on like original Fox or anything like that there's right? no way yeah, they're, yeah i just yeah, don't think i, I just Central think that might have been small failed. enough i've got an answer to your question no it's way called nbc nothing the christian broadcast network that's where it would have been appropriate and that's where it would actually <laughs> that, work because that's the same kind that. of people that you're doing here people that are living in the 60s and 70s yeah. that don't have any kind of concept of today we've got lots yeah, of complaints these are definitely about this out show. of the loop oh Hold yeah on, but sure. I, let's have one good thing about it the theme yeah, song was written by the naked ladies uh, <laughs> because that was when it finally hit i was like ah reprie for just a moment i love the bare naked joke. ladies um, yeah, oh, there was one. I'm trying to think of what it was because I wrote it, it down. Oh, Barry, here, what here's joke? what I like. The only the only joke I laughed at. I don't I don't think it's an intentional. You know what I think it is? Is the staircase is always repeating. They move some things around, but if you notice, all the elevator every right. time they climb stairs, the numbers change. But literally, the same things are on the floor, and the same X that's put over the elevator is like hanging down the same way in the corner. Like they don't. They literally just walked up, took the numbers off, and replaced them. And I think that's supposed to be a joke about for people like us you're, it's supposed to be a meta joke of clearly we're just refurbishing one hallway but they didn't even bother doing anything except the numbers they didn't change the way the tape was laid out nothing like that i i laughed at that if that was like a prop joke or that was like an in joke i thought that was funny but that's uh, also not a joke written by the writers either the the one joke i laughed at was the uh masturbating for money that was good you know, that, that you know was the I, one funny the, joke. just because that was out of out of left feel that was so far out of left field after he had been the one to correct him so you kind of set up a small dynamic of he you know sheldon's gonna be the one to correct and then to reverse that was just small yeah you're right that one was a little bit unexpected plus off kilter so i'll give him that one um i wrote down sheldon the rest of this was hard that was one of my notes on my uh note i did have another question though parsons though i think that comes from him trying to do the best he can with what he has to do with the character why were there three boxes of lunch when they originally just bought lunch for two? Okay. I was just curious. The, uh, just yeah, curious. Bad writing. I mean, it's just things like that. It's just the little things. Again, the juice box thing. I like juice boxes. I'm fine with that. But you don't need to use that as, again, a stupid archetype of a nerd. Yeah. It's just. I uh, get it. Nerds are childish. Uh, Didn't you know that? Uh, we pants them. Yeah. Like 30 year old people work to get a doctor. Yeah, get it? He, you know, he's such a nerd that he went and finished his, you know, high school early and he went into college, finished that, finished his master's and got a doctorate. <laughs> How immature of that guy. What a ridiculous goofball to hold a doctorate and, you know, a high level physics. What? There's nothing that screams immature. If you want to drink out of juice boxes while solving, you know, working on string theory and hell, we're only up to like, 12 dimensions at most in string theory between 12 and nine he's already got up to 20 something you know what that's not really immature i don't get the joke what is funny about a guy being successful in his field and being an asshole well i mean that's different house. from you laugh at it <laughs> except house is funny i'm gonna see house you, you left kind of with house you're on board with house and I'm you get you laugh at house laughing down at other people this idea so if penny okay had stuck with the dominatrix theme after she sent them over to the boyfriend's house and she was just a dominatrix for the whole entire show, make it like a bound or a crash, something like that. Don't pussyfoot around with this stuff. Do you think that would have worked? No, obviously not, but I still would have liked to see that. I'd like it better. At least it has balls then. I mean, it would have balls. At least it would be something, even if it got canceled. I mean, this, I could see 100% why it ran 
for eight seasons. I absolutely can see. It's the same reason NCIS is still running all over the place, or SVU, or whatever it is, or it you know, the, nothing of you. Yep. <laughs> so it's Sit easy to watch. While we literally feed you. Well, I used this before with Walker, and I'm going to use the word again, Prolifeed from the book 1984. It was the programming the government churned out so that it didn't get anybody excited or thinking about revolution or have independent thought. No, you, sit on, your call, you sit on your couch and you macrame or read a book about submarines. That sounds on. miserable. Yeah. I mean, I ask when I watch Matt Futurama, I don't zone out in Futurama. That's true. Yeah, you're in, in that. You're involved in that. Even Family Guy. So, Matt, from zero to 1,000. Yep. What grade would you give the Big Bang Theory? Oh, um, zero to a thousand. Yes, man, I don't even know because again, it's it's not for me. You know, like it doesn't do what it was. Perfect. Yeah, I hate knocking something that's not for my. Uh, it was audience. perfect for what it set out to do for who it was set out to do it for. You're a bunch of cowards. You're both backing out of what you need to say. The answer to this is zero because it was a terrible pilot. I understand why the networks bought the show. Don't get me wrong. I can see why they did that. That doesn't mean that this pilot was good. It was a pile of trash. It was not funny. It was racist. It was sexist. It was uh, anti-nerd, whatever word you might use but, for that. But in Arson's that sense, had some awesome pants. I would say other than that, it was nothing. It was a zero. The two things. One, the pants. Those were cool, like punk rocker pants. Like, I knew punk rockers that would wear plaid pants like that on stage with mohawks, two foot tall mohawks. So why are they giving him cool looking clothes if he's supposed to be a nerd? Didn't get that joke right off the bat. The very first scene you see him in an outfit and you're like, oh, what a cool outfit. Oh, he's a nerd. Didn't totally just did not get that. So it's weird that you picked up on the pants too, because it was specifically something that irritated me about the costume design is that that is something I would see a punk rocker wearing. Um, yeah, but if you walked in with a Lester pilot Jake shirt, I would have been <laughs> perfectly fine with that. <laughs> But also, I think for the pilot, for what they were doing, it was a good pilot in the sense that it sold what the premise was. Empty. Garbage. Like, this is it. This is what we're selling you. I don't think it was a good pilot in the sense that it was good content, but I think it was a good pilot. It did establish the characters. It established the relationship with who was across the hall. You saw some of the other background characters. You basically got the basic premise of it's going to be, you know, like a friends, but with nerds and a hot girl. That, zero to a thousand same thing be a man pick a number i think I, I i still dislike the show very much this. i know this one of my favorite things about stephen hawkins when someone asked him his and he's famously said people that talk about their iqs are losers so i want to ask you guys Dell, you gave it a four matt you gave it nothing because you're a coward so i'm going to ask you one final question before we go how can the people find you if they want to find you online uh for me uh Anywhere that you can find Matt Men Pod, also Media Arts and Talent. Uh, just search my name. You'll find me in the, the crap I've made. He loves to talk about Moesha, so send him a lot of stuff about that. Just like Dell, Matt loves everything Moesha, so talk to him about that. Dell, where can you find us if they want to find us on the World Wide Web? You can always find us at pilotpasspod.com. Uh, Com. That's just going to link to all of our social medias. Um, obviously, you can find us on almost every uh, podcasting uh, app available. If you can't, please hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, something like that, and let us know that we're not on that platform so we can definitely be added. Uh, make sure to give us five stars and a good review. That really helps out. Uh, check out uh, the website just for blogs and uploads of show notes and stuff like that. And uh, we are available on YouTube. We're trying to reach uh, a certain number of subscribers so we can get a proper uh personalized url that would help us out a lot if you could uh, like and subscribe for notifications on the youtube channel just search uh pilot pass uh, podcast matt you are the jerk that brought us this show today so i will leave you with the last <laughs> word what is your last word on the big bang theory uh watch it if you got to you know make dinner and you just want your tv on fair enough tv background is where we've gotten today until next time adios uh,